Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I wish we weren't wearing masks so we could see how exciting it is to come before you today with Joe Biden having the tremendous mandate uh, that he has and that uh, pretty soon the hyphen will be gone from vice president to president-elect Joe Biden. Uh, it's a happy day for our country because Joe Biden is a unifier because he is determined to bring people together, because he respects all points of view. And as he has said, I ran as a Democrat, I'll govern as president for all of the people, whether they voted for me or not. So I am so officially pleased with the outcome that is imminent and also personally delighted uh, because of the quality and caliber of leadership that Joe Biden will provide. This morning, it is clear that the Biden-Harris ticket will win the White House. Uh, his election is historic, propelled by the biggest vote ever in the history of our country, 73.8 million and counting Americans, the most votes ever received by any presidential ticket in history. President-elect Biden has a strong mandate to lead and it will have a strong Democratic House with him and many Democrats in the Senate. This has been a life or death fight for the fate of our democracy, as he says, the soul of our country. We did not win every battle in the House, but we did win the war. In 2018, we won 40 seats, 30, 30 or 31 of them in districts where Trump had won before. They were in Trump districts. In preparation for the 2020 election, I said to people, you have to help us. They said, oh, you've won. Let's just do the Senate and the White House. I know we won in districts, Trump districts, with Trump not on the ballot. In the next election, he will be on the ballot, and that makes winning those districts a steeper climb. I'm pleased that we've won overwhelmingly won those districts, not all of them. Not all of them, but next time he won't be on the ballot. At least, uh, one of the reasons we were able to win so many seats was because of the caliber of, of leadership of our members. Uh, uh, some of them won, some, a few did not, all of them excellent. And I hope that some of them will reconsider, uh, will consider going at it again. As you all know, the right to vote is a sacred right in our country, and the, uh, having that vote counted as cast is uh, uh, the fund foundation of our democracy. So we must be patient. I said to people, be calm. I said this Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, to be calm, be confident, be patient. And uh, the votes are telling the races are uh, called. We look forward to continued victories in House races. We have some out there. And we look forward to progress for the people, which was our agenda in 18, continues to be for the people. Lower health care costs, bigger paychecks by building infrastructure of America in a green way, cleaner government, H.R. 1, which will be the first on the agenda uh, in January. Again, it will be H.R. 1. While we prepare for the new Biden administration, we must also move swiftly for a new coronavirus relief bill. To continue that, uh, we want the Republicans to come back to the table, the White House, the leadership, whatever, um, 100, for two days in a row, over 100,000 cases were reported. The imperative to act could not be greater, over 9.5 million Nearly 9 million people infected, nearly a quarter of a million deaths, and tens of millions on unemployment. Again, I'm calling on the administration to come back to the table. Congress is also committed to, to passing an omnibus appropriations bill. This is the core of our work in the, in the lame duck when we don't have a pandemic killing hundreds of thousands of people and infecting millions and uh, making people food insecure, housing insecure, and the rest. But our responsibility to keep government open, 
to have an omnibus bill, and we intend to do that, not a CR, and we want to be able to do so in a way that gives confidence uh, that uh, we will ha have government open and continue to be, uh, rather than having a CR. So, sadly, instead of crushing the virus, it appears that the Trump administration will use its final moments in office and a desperate last step to destroy every possible protection for American health and well-being. So many people have said to me, and perhaps some of you along the way, what damage do you think that Trump will do between losing the election and the swearing, the inauguration of Joe Biden? Maybe you didn't phrase it quite that way, but that's how I heard it. And we knew that he would be up to mischief, separate and apart from uh, d trying to destroy the credibility of our elections, which we criticize other nations for doing, and now we uh, all enemies, foreign and domestic, uh, making assault on our elections. Well, we have one domestic. But apart from that, on the policy side, which is why we are here, people asked that question. What will he try to do that is harmful? And one of the, uh, this week, they showed their hand. We had suspicions of it, but couldn't speak publicly about it because until they went public. This week, the Trump administration put forward a radical new rule that would make regulations from the FDA and other health and human services agencies automatically sunset unless the agencies undertake a cumbersome, time-consuming process to renew them. This is a time when we need full attention of the FDA on the development and approval of vaccines. This is an opportunity cost, but it is a reflection of their disdain for science and governance. You know, they've been messing with the whole process of the FDA, trying to, to uh, diminish the importance of, of um, the trials that are necessary to approve efficacy and safety of a vaccine. The lame duck rules, this tr lame duck Trump rule seeks to paralyze government and generations of life-saving protections and try to burden the new president elected by the American people right out of the gate. For the Trump administration, will wait well wish to seek this regulation uh, rule beyond HHS to other agencies as well. People have been asking for a while, as I said, what can he do? Clean air, clean water, food safety, you name it. This is a dream of the radical right wing. First they started the recently on undermining the civil service, and now they're trying to say, unless we ex uh, review these, all of these um, regulations they will be sunsetted. Now, we do believe that regulations should be subject to review. That's not any objection. That's part of the process. But there is, there is a, a way to do it. And it, the way to do it is not to first zero in on the FDA at a time when we're trying to achieve a vaccine for the people. And this is... Uh, this is the work of the Energy and Commerce Committee, and that's why I'm so glad and honored by the presence of the distinguished chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, you'll hear from him about this. this I, I refer you to the National Register of November 4th, the day after the election. They put this uh, destructive rule in the congressional record. More from our distinguished chair. Thank you, Mr. Pallone for coming down to be here uh, for this uh, conversation, which is very important to the health and well-being of the American people with a respect for science, for governance, especially at a time of pandemic when the FDA should be focusing on a vaccine and not on a... Oh, <laughs>